Okay, so let's go ahead and use this video to talk about the light reaction of photosynthesis. But before we can really talk about the light reaction, we need to understand why plants are amazing. So plants are going to literally build themselves all of their macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids from the materials on Earth. So from carbon dioxide, water, and then nutrients from the soil. So plants, uh, and they do this through the power of sunlight, um, driving the light reaction of photosynthesis. So uh, these organisms are called autotrophs because they literally will build all of their own um, organic molecules and then heterotrophs rely on those autotrophs like we'll see in our ecology unit. So now when we think about plants though, uh, they need to be able to collect their solar energy and that's what the leaves are for. And plants, when we talk about energy during photosynthesis, solar energy is not usable energy. And therefore, the plant needs to convert that solar energy into a, a form that is usable by cells. So in the light reaction, they're gonna convert solar energy into ATP energy. However, ATP is not a good like energy storage molecule. So then in the Calvin cycle, they're going to need to, um, like figure out how to save their energy that they gathered from the sun. So that is where uh, the Calvin cycle is an anabolic pathway that is going to require an input of energy. And that energy is gonna be stored in the bonds of glucose molecules or other macromolecules. And then in cellular respiration, we'll see how that energy is released when we break those bonds. So this is what we're re really looking at in photosynthesis. We're looking at the light reaction of how is solar energy converted into usable energy? And then how is it saved in the Calvin cycle um, into larger organic molecules? So now plants need a way to take in this gas and do what's called gas exchange. So plants have these leaves, <laughs> have leaves, and on the leaves there are these openings called um, stoma or stomata. And so this is where carbon dioxide can enter, but also where oxygen can diffuse out or exit. Now, water is also lost from these stomata as well. So in transpiration, when water evaporates from plants, it's coming from the st through the stomata or the stoma. And so when you look at this, there's a bunch of holes on uh, leaves. Um, okay, so they're actually, the stomata are actually on the underneath side of the plant leaves, and that's actually where the carbon dioxide will enter and where oxygen can um, leave. And so with that though, you can see inside the leaf that there is some air spaces for gas exchange in plants. Okay, so let's go ahead though and zoom in and look at uh, photosynthesis now. So photosynthesis has two reactions. In the first reaction, we call it the light reaction. And the second reaction is the dark reaction. So in the light reaction or the light dependent reaction, um, it is going to require light, but also water. So when we say plants need water and carbon dioxide, the water is what's required in the light reaction. And during the light reaction, uh, the plant will produce, or the chloroplast will produce oxygen as a waste product, but also it will convert that solar energy into the usable energy called ATP and NADPH. Then in the Calvin cycle, so oxygen's a waste, and then in the Calvin cycle, though, this is where the plant's going to require carbon dioxide. And this is an anabolic pathway, so you have an energy investment. So this is where the ATP and the NADPH will be input into the Calvin cycle, and this is where your macromolecules will be produced. So glucose is an example, but um, really technically it's G3P, and then that will be used to build other molecules like glucose or starch or lipids, triglycerides, etc amino acids, okay. So when we look at a plant cell, we're gonna go ahead and zoom into the chloroplast. So the chloroplast is a double membrane organelle. Um, it actually evolved from ancient prokaryotes. You can always check out my video on the endosymbiotic theory to study that more. Um, but let's go ahead and identify two locations within the chloroplast. So within the chloroplast, we have what's called the thylakoid. The thylakoid is where the light reaction happens. So light reaction is happening in these like flattened discs um, inside of the chloroplast. So here you have the light reaction. Then the space around the thylakoids is where the dark reaction happens. 
But sometimes, and not very rarely, uh, you might see the word um, like granum or grana, and that is going to be a stack of thylakoids. But like I just mentioned, oops, this is my face. The uh, stroma is the space outside of the thylakoids, and that is where the Calvin cycle or dark reaction occurs. So let's go ahead and see the overall big picture between the light reaction and the dark reaction. So this green thing here represents a chloroplast. Oh, I'm sorry. This whole thing is a chloroplast. This light green thing represents the thylakoid. And you can see the light shining on it because the thylakoid is where the light reaction happens. So here, we're going to zoom in though. Uh, so in the membrane of the thylakoid, uh, there are these proteins. So these two proteins are called photosystems. And the photosystems are what gather or harvest the light in the light reaction. The photosystems are what hold the pigments in, um, in the light reaction. So here, uh, between the two photosystems, there is an electron transport chain. And uh, this purple protein here represents ATP synthase. So water is required during the light reaction. And ultimately, you'll have a reduced electron carrier at the very end of the light reaction called NADPH. That will be the final electron acceptor in the light reaction. Uh, there will be a proton gradient that accumulates within the thylakoid space. Um, oxygen is, uh, will pair with another one forming O2 and it will diffuse out because it's nonpolar. So protons though will flow through ATP synthase to make ATP by photophosphorylation. And now we have that solar energy converted into two um, like usable types of energy by cells, electrons and ATP, which will then be invested in the Calvin cycle or the dark reaction. So carbon dioxide is required here and during the Calvin cycle or the dark reaction, um, carbon dioxide is basically going to become reduced, which means it's going to be um, accepting electrons and hydrogens. So we're going to like build on to carbon dioxide, and that's why it's an anabolic pathway. So it gets those electrons from the NADPH that was from the light reaction, and then it will also require ATP to drive these reactions. So at the end of the Calvin cycle, you'll end up with um, a three carbon sugar called G3P. Two G3Ps make a six carbon glucose. Okay, so those are the two main reactions or pathways in photosynthesis. Um, so before we can really understand that though, we need to look at electron carriers. And it's exactly like the name implies, electron carriers will carry electrons. So at the end of the light reaction, this NADP plus is the electron carrier used in photosynthesis. Um, so it will gain electrons. It's the final electron acceptor. Now, when it gains those electrons, it also gains a hydrogen. So now this is a reduced electron carrier that will carry the electrons over to the Calvin cycle where they'll be used. So this reduced electron carrier will actually be oxidized in the Calvin cycle and those electrons will be added to carbon dioxide when carbon dioxide is reduced, gaining them. And now this is back to oxidized and can be used again in the light reaction. So now let's go ahead and zoom in a bit uh, inside of that thylakoid. So here, when we say thylakoid membrane, the remember it's that like disc looking thing, the membrane is a lipid bilayer. So it, therefore, the protons that we'll see accumulating inside cannot diffuse out. So here we have these two photosystems. So photosystems are like a group of proteins within that thylakoid membrane. And within um, these photosystems, we have chlorophyll A and we have chlorophyll B. Now these are the main pigments in plants. And pigments a pigment's job is to absorb light and reflect light. So here, this is where in the light reaction, when the sun shines on to these photosystems, they're going to absorb the sunlight. But because these are chlorophyll, we'll see in a few slides, chlorophyll actually doesn't absorb green light. So actually green light will bounce off of the chlorophyll back to your eyes, and that's why you see the plants as green. So here we have photosystems, um, one and two, actually. 
And between the two photosystems, you have what's called an electron transport chain, another series of proteins or enzymes that will pass electrons down the ETC. Now, let's go ahead and see how this works. Oh, I do want to emphasize the names, though. So here where it says PS2, that stands for photosystem 2, and over here is PS1. Um, PS1 was actually discovered first, and then PS2 was discovered second, so therefore it's a little backwards. Okay, so let's go ahead and hear some words. So photosystems are located in the thylakoid membrane. They contain light harvesting pigments that are required for photosynthesis. Okay, so as we look at, um, now this is a zoomed in picture of chlorophyll. In the center here you have, and um, this is actually called the porphyrin ring. Uh, I don't think you need to know that though. So here in the middle though is a magnesium that has a two plus. So in a few minutes, when we see the electrons being donated from chlorophyll into the electron transport chain, uh, they're actually coming from the center of this chlorophyll molecule from the magnesium. Okay, so when light, okay, here we go. When light shines onto the photosystems, that's solar energy, and it's going to actually get like funneled or transferred to chlorophyll, which is like the main reaction center inside of the photosystems. So that chlorophyll is going to like, like imagine the light is getting funneled to chlorophyll. And now those electrons in the center of that porphyrin ring on that magnesium are going to get excited to a higher energy state. And they're actually going to break free. So watch, I think I have them shake. That's them getting excited to a higher energy state. And they actually will break free from chlorophyll. So chlorophyll will actually donate electrons into the electron transport chain of the light reaction. So here, at the very end of the electron transport, oh, two electrons, sorry, there we go, okay. So at the very end of the electron transport chain is an electron carrier, NADP+. So this NADP+, is the final electron acceptor, and it's gonna pull those electrons down the electron transport chain. When it gains those electrons, it gets reduced because it's gaining electrons and it'll also pick up a hydrogen. So let's watch. So here, the electrons um, are accepted by NADP+, it gets reduced and now it's NADPH. This will now carry those electrons over to the Calvin cycle. But now we have a problem. This chlorophyll B in PS1 just donated electrons into the electron transport chain. It needs to get replaced, right? Like we need electrons to be replaced into that chlorophyll B. So here's what happens. These electrons over here from PS2 are gonna travel down the electron transport chain and then replace those ones that uh, chlorophyll B just lost or just donated. Now pay attention though, as the electrons are passed down the electron transport chain, what's gonna happen to these protons? So these protons are starting out in the stroma. Okay, so as the electrons travel from PS2 to PS1, the protons are going to be pumped into the thylakoid space. So when I use the words pumped, uh, the energy is coming from the passing of those electrons. As we back up, as the electrons are passed from one protein to the next in the electron transport chain, that is what's doing, they give up a little bit of energy and that's the energy used to pump those protons into that thylakoid space. Now you can see here in PS1, chlorophyll B, those two electrons are now replaced. So the next time, like where, as the light continues to shine all day, the light reaction can continue. Okay, but now hopefully you're wondering, well, what happened to the electrons in PS2 and chlorophyll A? Like how do we replace those? This is where water is required for the light reaction. So water is actually going to be oxidized here. So water, when you think of what oxidized means, it means it donates electrons. So water is going to be split apart in this step into hydrogens, electrons, and oxygen. So it's basically broken apart, and now it's gonna donate its electrons 
into photosystem two, chlorophyll A. Okay, so I want you to think about, well, this, this process is called photolysis. Lysis means to split. And so during the light reaction, the water is split apart and the electrons will replace those two, oops, that was on a timer. <laughs> those electrons will replace those two that just went through the electron transport chain. The other thing, because the thylakoid membrane is a lipid bilayer, those H pluses, those protons are ions and they are trapped within the thylakoid space. Now oxygen right here is a single oxygen, but it'll pair with another one forming O2. And this is a waste product from the plants. So that will actually diffuse out. Um, and that's what is the source of oxygen in our air. So when the atmosphere is 20% oxygen, it's literally from the splitting of water. Okay, so now the electrons can repeat the electron transport chain all over. A new um, NADP plus will be off reduced to NADPH. The electrons will continue to travel from PS2 to PS1, pumping protons into the thylakoid space. A water will be split by photolysis and the electrons will replace the ones in chlorophyll A. The protons will stay in the thylakoid space and the oxygen will diffuse out. So this is the main part of the light reaction. However, okay, so there's photolysis, the splitting of water. However, we now do get a proton gradient accumulating within the thylakoid space. Now, uh, okay, so the two reasons, if we actually think about it, like how did the, all those protons get there? Some were from the pumping of the protons from the stroma into the thylakoid, and the other ones came from the splitting of water. So just like we'll see in aerobic respiration in the mitochondria, there's actually an enzyme called ATP synthase. And ATP synthase is like a turnstile. It actually like turns. And when there's a flow of protons through it. So here you have a high concentration of protons that will flow through ATP synthase. And as they flow through ATP synthase, say, ATP synthase, uh, the ATP synthase will turn a little bit and it will phosphorylate ADP into ATP. So you'll take that ADP with two phosphates and then a third phosphate will be added forming ATP. So this um, continues to happen and this is how that solar energy is converted into ATP by building up a proton gradient in the thylakoid space that will lead to a process called chemiosmosis. So chemiosmosis is the diffusion of ions down their electrochemical gradient or from a high concentration to a low concentration. And okay, that's, you can pause and read the words if you want. So here, this type of uh, making ATP, yeah, it is a type of phosphorylation, but really, it's because light drove this process. If you did not have light shining on the, the photosystems, none of this would be possible. So we actually call this type of phosphorylation photophosphorylation. Okay, so this is just a textbook picture of it all. I'm just going to fast forward uh, through this. Um, all right, but I do want to talk about different wavelengths of light. So here, light comes in different, like, uh, light travels as both a wave and a particle, um, but here light has different wavelengths and you can see in the purple wavelengths it's a higher like frequency versus in the red it's a little bit like longer wavelengths. Okay, so when we talked earlier about chlorophyll absorbing different wavelengths of light, um, it actually doesn't absorb that green wavelength. So that green wavelength of light actually will bounce off of the pigment and be reflected into your eyes. And that is why you see green when you look at the leaves. So in the fall, the main pigments in plants will actually, in the ones that change colors, the main pigments will now be your red and orange pigments in the fall. And those will be the, the light colors that are bouncing off to your eyes. Okay. So let's go ahead. Um, I want to point out that plants have, a, there are a lot of different pigments in food, and uh, these are actually a source of some of our vitamins uh, and minerals inside of us. So when you look at like orange, the orange pigment, beta carotene, is actually used in our bodies and turned into vitamin A for our eyesight or our vision. 
So in parts of the world where there's high amounts of poverty, if a person isn't eating orange pigment from like carrots or pumpkins or sweet potatoes, um, they actually have a vitamin A deficiency and can go blind. Millions of people go blind from vitamin A deficiency. So pigments are really important to eat a wide range of natural colors in your diet. Okay, so when we look at a graph like this though, this is called an absorption spectrum. And when you see between the five and 600 nanometers of, of light, those wavelengths, um, well, first look at the Y axis when it talks about absorb, absorbance. That's how much light is being absorbed by those pigments. So you can see in the bluish and purple uh, wavelengths of light, as well as the red and orange wavelengths of light. Chlorophyll A and B will absorb light, and that's what drives photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is gonna do, or the light reaction will do the best in the blue and red wavelengths of light for plants. But if I were to shine mostly green and yellow light on a plant, you can see it's not being absorbed by those photosystems. Instead, it's bouncing off and being reflected. So you can hypothesize or predict that there wouldn't be very much uh, photosynthesis happening in the green or the yellow wavelengths because the light's not being absorbed. Okay, so let's go ahead and, um, okay, so this too, I also wanted to point out, I've been talking about chlorophyll as the main pigment in the photosystems. But you notice on the sides, there are other little green discs. So the plants actually will have um, what's called antenna or accessory pigments that will help harvest that energy. So you can see like as the light shines down, um, how it excites those electrons. Okay, um, water is split. So here's just showing you a zoomed in picture. But I, what I really wanted to emphasize though, was these little antenna or accessory pigments. They help to like harvest or capture that light and kind of funnel it towards chlorophyll so that enough solar energy reaches the chlorophyll to have the donut, <laughs> the donut, have the electrons actually break free and um, I'd like start into the electron transport chain. So these are accessory pigments on the side that help uh, to excite the electrons to that higher energy state. Okay. Um, all right, so that's just showing you the different pigments and the different colors that exist and light. So that is where I'm going to stop the video and then we'll move into the Calvin cycle next.